unmindful consumption, it begins with unmindful attention. Unmindful consumption ends when mindful attention is brought to bear on what we consume. Today, I'd like to zero in on one habit that deserves careful, caring attention. So I start with, a, with posing a few questions. How many of you get up in the morning and the first thing you do is you reach for your phone? How many times a day do you check your phone, whether you need it or not? How many times a day do you reach for the phone and scroll through the news, through social media, play games, or stream a show? Last question. How many of you surf the net, surf social media, or the news at bedtime? Okay, just for your consideration. Smartphones have insidiously inserted themselves into our lives. We know where they are at all times. We don't go anywhere without them. Commuters no longer read books or newspapers. They sit staring at a screen. Have a few minutes to kill while waiting for a friend and likely you'll pull your phone out of your pocket and entertain yourself. Idle time has become screen time. Forget about waiting. Forget about working with impatience. We can occupy ourselves with our phones. Smartphones have, in relatively quick order, become almost ubiquitous in our modern culture. While many of us here grew up without them, we read books, hung out with friends, played games or music, now we can't imagine a life without them. We depend on them are dependent on them. In just 20 years, in just 20 years, most people own a smartphone and the usage has exploded. In 2014, the average daily usage was an hour and a half a day. And today it's about four hours, four. Now that's a lot of time. Doing what exactly? So here's my question. How mindful are we when we pick up our phones? Likely not so much. It's not our fault. We're adaptive creatures. When these devices were introduced some 20 years ago, no one could have imagined that they would be anything other than helpful. But now, research shows that they cause changes in brain chemistry that they affect the brain development of children, contribute to depression, sleep disorders, anxiety, attentional problems, and addiction. No joke. Take a look at your smartphone and you'll find that there's an app that tracks your hourly usage. Smartphones have actually become enough of a problem that the developers have created apps to help curb our addiction to them. <laughs> a device has been created to help us and now we have become addicted to it and they're trying to help us with our addiction. Danger Will Robinson as the robot in Lost in Space said. <sighs> Right? We know there's a problem when, when the creators are, are making apps to help curb our addiction. And it would be wise for us to heed their warning. As humans, yes, we, are, we have easily adapted to changes. And it's our, to our benefit that we're so adaptive. It's ensured our survival. However, to paraphrase a quote from some unknown author, it is no measure of sanity for someone to feel sane in an insane situation. <laughs> and let's face it, the degree to which we've adapted to a vice that has so radically altered our way of life should give us pause. When did it happen? When did the device become our best friend we can't live without? 
When did we need PSAs, public service announcements, to tell us we need to not text in a movie theater or, or when we're driving? In recent years, retreat centers, having no control over people's usage, ask folks to voluntarily surrender their phones at the beginning of a retreat to help folks focus on the task at hand. And how many people do you think actually heed that request? Not as many as you may think, really. Make no mistake, we are dependent on them. So what do we do, really? Well, generally speaking, it's nothing that mindfulness can't handle if we use our attention wisely. The encouragement here is to take an honest look at your usage. No judgment, really. Judgment just interrupts the looking. Take a look and check your phone. See if your assessment is accurate. It will tell you how much you are on your phone in any given day. Observe your phone habit. Now, when do you reach for it? Now ask, why? Why am I reaching for this? Is it because we need to make a call or text someone? Is it because we're nervous, bored, or trying to distract ourselves from uncomfortable feelings? Good to know. It's great to be born human because we have choice. We, we have agency. So let's use that to our advantage. Once we start to see how and when and why we're using the device then and only then can we meaningfully insert breaks or meaningfully specify times when, to, when we use them. Just like food, we have to learn how to make healthy relationships with these devices. It's not a given. Yes, they are helpful, no doubt. No doubt, during the pandemic, the pandemic it, was, it was a gift, it was a lifeline to be able to see and speak to others without fear of getting sick. They are a blessing when we are lost to simply open, the, open up a map and find our way. So helpful to have a map handy. But too much of a good thing is still too much. Whether your time goes into playing games or sending Snapchats to friends or watching cat videos, it's wise to increase our awareness of the things that can change. The small, small changes repeated many times strengthen new habits. So if you will, imagine into a view of a loving elder, a wise parent or caregiver, a beneficial presence. And now look out through those eyes and consider what's possible. Consider for your welfare. And here are a few considerations. When the impulse arises to pick up the phone, notice, notice, and then ask why? If it's merely to distract yourself, practice resisting the impulse. This is good practice. Take a breath, lift your head up and see what's happening around you. Boyd Varty, he's, he wrote, um, the lion tracker's guide to life said, staring daily at screens, we have lost what a far horizon does to the spirit. So lift up your heads, take a breath, and look at what the world that's going on before your very eyes. It's an incredible show. Number two, like a wise parent, give yourself a few guidelines or a schedule and follow them. This is an act of love. We're learning to take care of ourselves with these powerful devices. That means choose your moments. Insert periods into the day when you have full freedom to use your device, right? But make it discreet, clear times when you use it. And when you do, 
then notice what the result is. How do you feel? Are you uplifted, depleted, stressed out, restless, anxious? Feel its effect on you. Read the signs and heed the signs. This is how we learn. Set limits. Set limits based on locations and situations. Put the food down during meals when you're, or when you're visiting friends. Be present to what is happening in real time, real time. If you catch yourself frantically scrolling and you come up for air long enough to notice, See if you can take one mindful breath, one full inhalation, one full exhalation, and then go back to it if you want to. Now, you might then play with how many times can I do this? Can I interrupt? Just come up for air, take a breath, and then go back into whatever I'm reading. Interrupting the habit begins to uh, slow the habit down, um, loosen the connection and refreshes the system when we take a breath. This is really good practice. Another possibility is keep your device out of sight. During the day, put your phone in a place that is not near you. Make it inconvenient to look at. Give yourself the time and the space to focus on whatever or whoever is in front of you. Insert periods of the day when the device is off or when it's on airplane mode. Without the dings and the rings and the notification alarms, we can more easily resist the impulse to immediately pick it up and see who called or texted or what the latest news headline is, right? We don't need to know immediately. It will still be there in an hour, I, I promise. Finally, the last two. They're, they're kind of bookends. Create a waking up practice. Don't wake up and reach for the phone. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Give yourself time to wake up. Give yourself time to come into the body, time to come into breathing and feel the breath, time to kind of come in and feel, feel that the, the heart is beating and the mind is thinking, right? Get time to come into the here now. So giving yourself time to, to orient yourself to yourself and yourself to your surroundings, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. Land there and breathe and enjoy. And then at the end of the day, bedtime too, make it a practice. Put the, put the phone to bed. Oh, say an hour first, an hour before, before you go to bed. You stop, turn the phone off, you're done for the day, and put the phone to bed, say goodnight to it, and then you unwind. Spend some time unwinding. If at all possible, keep the phone out of your bedroom. If you have to, put it on airplane mode. You can still use your, your alarm, your waking up alarm, right? But it quiets the noise of the notifications. Or better yet, go analog. Go completely analog. Use a clock and use a watch, right? Put the phone away, use a clock and use a watch. In fact, these days now, that's becoming hip to go analog, okay? So <laughs> we can practice being hip. Unmindful consumption of our, of our devices is really no joke. So let's, let's bring mindfulness to this habit of ours. It's for our welfare that we learn how to be in right relationship with this powerful and influential tool. We can do this for ourselves and for each other. Thank you for your kind attention.